Within Photoshop, there is a secret hidden tool that really helps you to sharpen your photos if you know how to use it. I wanna cover it in today's video. My name is Austin James Jackson. I'm a professional landscape photographer based in Utah. I'm so excited you're here. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, we're gonna be covering uh, one of my favorite little sharpening techniques that I think can help you to really sharpen just about any image. Now, I'm a landscape and wildlife photographer, so I'm mostly sharpening my outdoor images, but this can work on other things like portraits, cityscapes, and even nightscapes as well. Now, even if you're a Lightroom user and you don't understand how to use Photoshop, you'll still be able to do this just by loading your image into Photoshop. It's really, really simple. But if you do want to learn Photoshop, I'll link my uh, playlist here where I teach you everything you need to know about editing in Photoshop. It's like nine or 10 videos long. You should definitely check that out if you haven't. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump right in there into Photoshop. The first image that we're going to be working with is this one here. Now, when I zoom in, you can see that it's already sharp, it's in focus, but it's not super, super sharp. This lens isn't amazingly sharp that I'm using here. I'd like to be able to see the kind of the hair on his back stand up a little bit. Um, and I am using a 60 megapixel camera, so it is leaving a little bit left to be wanted when it comes to sharpness. So I will show you how I'm going to sharpen this image. Now, if you've got a lock on your layer, make sure you unlock it. There will be like a lock button here. You can click that. You've got your layer. Click and drag down here. This duplicates the layer, which is exactly what you want to do. Then you'll go up to uh, filter. You'll go down to other and we're gonna use high pass. Now I will mention there is a few sharpening options here. Um, these sharpening options can work decently, but I think that the method I'm about to show you works a lot better. Um, sharpen, sharpen edges and sharpen more are like automatic sharpening. They're not very good. Uh, smart sharpen tries to determine what should be sharpened in the image. Um, so that's not really my favorite because it's not super customizable. And then the unsharp mask just sharpens every pixel um, equally based on the settings you use on the unsharp mask. So the best way to do it is going to be other you're gonna hit high pass. Then you're gonna get this black and white loadout of your image, uh, or gray rather, it's not really black and white, it's gray. If you increase the radius, you'll see more in your image. Now, uh, you can zoom in if you want. Anything that you can see is what's going to be sharpened. So you can see when I zoom in, it's really faint, but you can see the antlers. Now, generally, I'm gonna start with a radius of like probably four is a good place to be. That'll give me a nice sharpen. You can see I can see all of this on his back, all the hair, all that. So all this is what's going to be sharpened. Now you'll hit OK. That will load out here. And then you'll need to change the blend mode here to overlay. And now you can zoom in and check it out. That is it. I'm going to show you a few more advanced techniques, but that's the basis of it. Before, after. You can see how it just kind of makes all this pop a little bit more. We've got before and after. Scroll over here to the antlers, before and after, before and after. Now, if it's coming in too strong for you, um, you can turn down the opacity. You'd probably want to stay zoomed in. If you don't know how to zoom in, by the way, um, you can hold the space bar and press command on a Mac control on PC and then click and drag to the right to zoom in or left to zoom out. Additionally, you can do command plus or command minus as well. Definitely want to zoom in when you are checking this out. So you could lower the opacity if it was coming in too strong. Um, I'm thinking about right there, it looks pretty good. Now let me show you another example here um, where this maybe wouldn't work as well, but a little way that you can kind of remedy um, the haloing that it's going to create. So I've got this image here. We're gonna duplicate the background layer once again, drag and drop to that plus. Same thing, we're gonna go filter, other, and we're gonna go high pass. And we're going to just do four pixel radius again. One thing that you will notice up here, though, is that you can see we're kind of sharpening outside of the edge here. So we might be getting a little haloing. And I could reduce the radius, but I still want all of that sharpening. I don't want to reduce the sharpening, so I want to keep it at four. Change the blend mode to overlay. Now you can see, especially where the sky is blue, before and after. You can see we're really accentuating that halo. Now there's already a little bit of a halo, um, so it's obviously not gonna remove that, but we don't wanna accentuate it and make it stronger. But the problem is, like when I scroll down here, um, I'm liking the amount of sharpening that it's applying to my cactus here. So I don't wanna reduce the opacity. So we need to make a layer mask to mask this out of the sky. Now this is really the powerful thing about Photoshop. So we can apply this sharpen and we can remove it from one part of the image. So there's a thousand different ways that you could select the sky here. I'll show you what I think is the easiest way for images where there's high contrast between foreground and sky. 
you're going to click on your background layer here um, and then you're going to go to select you're going to go to sky now that should load out a nice selection of the sky you can see it's done a pretty good job here i'm not that worried about this bush being out of it i'm not going to bother refining that i don't think it'll make much of a difference now click on your top layer create a layer mask now the problem is my layer mask is doing the opposite of what I want to do. It's allowing this sharpen to apply to everything that's white here, which is the sky, and it's not applying to the black. I want it to do the opposite. So I'm just gonna command I to hit invert. If you don't know how to use layer masks, I'll link my video here explaining how layer masks work. Uh, check that out and then come on back here to understand exactly how this works. But now you can see when I zoom in, I can toggle this. You can see it's still sharpening the rock. I'll zoom in a little bit more just so you can maybe see it if you're watching this in lower resolution before after you can see we're not there is still some haloing but again that was there that was present before we started doing this and so it's not adding any more haloing around the edge and then when we zoom in to the bottom here look at maybe this cactus here you can see it's really accentuating that nicely now, additionally, if you were finding that it was coming in too strong somewhere, you could click on your layer mask, paint with a brush here, and just paint it out a little bit, drop the opacity, whatever you want. You can totally re, uh, refine this layer mask here to make the sharpen look just like you like. So I think this technique works on all kinds of images. You can see we've got a landscape here, and we've got a, a wildlife image here. And I've tried this on many other you know, portraits, nightscapes, all that, cityscapes, everything like that. And I think that it still works great. All right, guys, try to keep this one short and sweet. Hopefully it was helpful for you. And this is something that you can apply to your own images. Again, remember that if you are a Lightroom user, you can still use this technique in Photoshop. All you need to do is load your image into Photoshop. Very, very simple and easy to do. Um, and then just follow along with this video, pause and play. Um, maybe play this on your phone next to your computer. If you have an iPad or something like that, play it along at the same time as you do it to your photos. I think you're gonna like the way that it looks. Now, finally, the last thing to note is that uh, this technique is just a good kind of general sharpen. But if you are doing something like um, social media or you're doing like prints or something like that, you may want to apply a different additional sharpen um, on top of that. Um, you know, for social media, you can sharpen a lot more because it's going to be really small. Whereas for print, if you're printing large, you can't quite sharpen as much. So those are a few things to note. I've got videos on both of those um, that I've linked here and linked down below in the description um, that you should definitely check out if you are looking to sharpen for specifically for print or specifically for social media because like I said this is more of just like a general sharpen apply it on all your images while you're editing it um, this isn't really that export sharpen that you're going to want to do so hopefully that makes sense if you guys have any questions about the process about sharpening anything like that let me know down below in the comments otherwise I want to thank you guys so much for being here really really appreciate it um, and this is Austin James Jackson we'll see you guys next time